So today, Dr. Mario Mondaka is going to be speaking for us. He's the engineering specialist in fluid dynamics um, for Arctic Barn Solutions. So Mario, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. Um, welcome everyone. Thank you for uh, being here. Um, I'm here to talk about the delicate balance in ventilated robot barns, or also known as AMS barns or aromatic milking systems. Um, I am a biosystems engineer by training. As you can see, my bachelor's is in biosystems, as is my master's and my PhD. It's very much applied uh, to different areas, environmental engineering, um, hydrology and hydraulics, but mostly computational analysis of uh, heat and mass transfer. This is a, in my PhD, I had the opportunity to apply this into dairy operations. Uh, there's a lot of balancing heat and mass in, in dairy uh, facilities and making sure that there's proper ventilation and adequate ventilation. Um, I got the opportunity to work as a postdoctorate at the University of Wisconsin as part of the Dairy Land Initiative Extension Program or Outreach Program, um, where my tasks and my tenure was to develop a ventilation assessment methodology so that we could address uh, the airflow distributions and the, the locations of potential uh, risk areas in a barn, as well as formalizing the ventilation recommendations for adult cows. Uh, they were not they were very quant qualitative before, and after uh, my tenure, we have now more quantitative recommendations. And we continue to improve on those. So that is an ongoing uh, research and ongoing uh, recommendations that are being looked at. Uh, after finishing that, I got the opportunity to work, and I'm currently a, an engineering specialist in fluid and thermodynamics for Artex Van Solutions. And I want to kind of guide you through what that looks like. Um, so a lot of what we do, or a lot of what I do, is I look at computational fluid dynamics. These pictures that you're going to see, blue means um, very slow or dead air, um, typically below one meter per second or 200 feet per meter, and red is really fast air. So here we see uh, three examples. This, this top one would be a cross ventilated barn uh, where air is flowing uh, across the barn under some baffles. Here we have a tunnel barn with circulation fans to improve the airspeed in the, in the resting area. And here we have the recent, a positive, I always forget its name. It's the, the positive pressure hybrid or the all season hybrid barn uh, where we're trying to get natural ventilation, but then on those summer months when it gets really hot, we can use positive ventilation to bring not only cooling, but also fresh air. And in this scenario where we were looking at, uh, we also wanted to get some of that air into the feeding uh, area, into the feed zone, so we would be cooling the cows not only during uh, resting, but also during their feeding. So we're evaluating new and um, new technologies as well as current technologies. We've done some work assessing uh, producers' barns, for example, uh, what will typically happen is a project will arrive either as a new design idea or as a current customer question. Um, we've had assessing uh, airflow obstructions, uh, fan installation, things like that. In this case, we had a consumer that had some very, some very uh, strong opinions about where to put his baffles. So he came in with his ideas. Artists provided also their own uh, recommendations, and then I provided my recommendations. We decided on which ones to model, to test, and we looked at different baffle openings, different baffle locations, uh, not just to look at the airspeed, because uh, if you look from this graph, calculating the average airspeed under a baffle is relatively simple. You just take the total airflow divided by the area, and you get these yellow blobs, which is the airspeed under the, the expected airspeed under the baffle. And if you look at this diagonal and the average value, it's a pretty good assessment, but it doesn't capture the whole picture. These cows are not getting as fast airspeed as these cows are. So we are able to then say um, with these models, uh, your idea is good, but you're missing this many cows for having good airflow or your idea is great, etc. So this is typically what I'll be doing. Um, I'll get something from a, a project manager that gives me a, a consumer that needs their barn or their situation ad addressed, and then I'll model that and have some recommendations. Uh, currently, we are uh, recently figured out a way to be able to model circulation fans. Uh, I haven't seen any publications in the literature looking at circulation fans models, 
this is very exciting because we can start giving recommendations, not just on the fan separation, but also on the fan location uh, uh, angle and the fan, um, both angle towards the stalls and side to side to the stalls so that we can get the airflow and we're gonna validate those models in a research trial to make sure our models are accurate. In the end, the objective is to cool the cow. So what we really want is to be able to model these fans properly so that we can take these air speeds and model them and see how the air is affecting the cow as well as how the cow is affecting the air. My current assessment methodology uh, can't have cows in the pen directly because the cows will eat the sensors. <laughs> They're very curious. Um, but this way uh, we can take into account the cows, which are very big obstructions to the flow and be able to optimize these fan locations and fan, um, fan angles uh, when the cows would be in the stalls, which hasn't been done before. This is important because it really addresses the custom uh, nature of, of the barn and automatic milking systems are generally very custom. There's a couple cookie cutter designs that some of the bigger companies like to use, but as many of you know, you have your barn drawing and then by the end of the day, what gets built is very different from what was designed. So being able to accommodate to these custom changes it's very important in designing these ventilation systems, uh, particularly in automatic milking systems. Now, these are not my opinions on automatic, automatic milking systems. This is what you'll find in the marketing and the brochures of automatic milking systems. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the discussion of whether how true or not true this is. There's a lot of publications on both extension and research journals regarding this topic. So feel free to find those uh, and make your own opinions. But typically automatic milking systems are marketed as providing flexibility for the producers. They can finally go to their kids game. They couldn't, uh, they could never go again because of the milking. They alleviate the lack of quality of labor. They have continuous voluntary milking, which leads to a higher average milk uh, per day. Customization of milking and management for producers and better health because of improved tracking records. Uh, these have been, of course, challenged by a lot of people, uh, but in the end, the, the, the biggest selling point is that they provide flexibility uh, because the cows essentially milk themselves. Um, whether that's true or not, we're, we're not going to get into. What I really care about as the nerd engineer that <laughs> worries about how the air is flowing is the fact that now I have a giant room in the middle of my barn blocking the airflow, and I can't have... Um, the typical design that I would do before, because now there is literally a room blocking the air, sometimes in very critical areas of the, of the pen. It also creates different quality levels in the pen, and we'll get a little bit more into that, but essentially it just drastically changes the barn design in, in ventilation standards and in facility design too, but um, that may no longer have the traditional ventilation um, recommendations apply. So let's quickly go through a ventilation crash course of what it takes to ventilate a dairy facility. We have our three main um, cow areas, the adult cow ventilation, which is where you have uh, your barns essentially. They'll either be natural or mechanically ventilated. You have your holding area, which are typically ventilated using natural ventilation um, the larger facilities are starting to use mechanical ventilation and you have parlor ventilation, which is typically done with positive pressure ventilation. Here is the, um, what I published in the veterinary clinics of, of North America. It's the four basic barn designs for ventilation. Most barns can be put into one of these categories. They're either a natural barn, a hybrid barn, a tunnel barn or a cross ventilated barn. And for our purposes, a tunnel barn is a barn that has the airflow parallel to the feed lane, regardless of its overall dimensions. And a cross ventilated barn is a barn that has its airflow perpendicular to the feed lane. The overall recommendations are that for summer, you need 40 to 60 air changes per hour and a minimum of one meter per second at the resting space, ideally two, but 
at least one is where we see the most cooling effects uh, from airflow. Winter ventilation is typically recommended to have a minimum of four air changes, and this applies for all of these systems. Parlor ventilation and cooling, you typically have a positive, uh, positively pressured uh, parlor so that you're preventing outside air from bringing dust, water, et cetera, uh, into the parlor for safety reasons. You wanna keep it as clean as possible. Depending on the region, you'll have heating or cooling technologies, both for the cows and the workers. Uh, for example, uh, there's, a, there's a parlor in Wisconsin that's using showers over the, the parlor stalls to cool the cows because essentially that is going to cool every single milking cow in the herd. And it's a very low cost solution that is cooling your whole herd. The holding area uh, provides the optimal targeted location for cooling. Um, I can't stress this enough. You get the most bang for your buck for any cooling installation you install in the holding area because anything you install there will affect most of the herd. Natural uh, herds, uh, sorry, natural holding areas will typically have large open sidewalls uh, to bring allow the air in. Mechanical ventilation will usually use tunnel and the exhaust fans will be placed away from the parlor to keep the air of the parlor as clean as possible. But both solutions, natural and mechanical, use uh, typically use soakers and circulation fans or misters to maximize cooling before milking. Again, this is because this is the area in the barn where you're gonna get the most cooling efficiency because all of the cows have to go through there. This is a research farm here at uh, the Sonoran Institute of Technology where if you can see just about every sprinkler is hitting a cow and the fans over here are, are always hitting a cow. So the animal density makes it so your cooling is very efficient. It's very low cost and you're affecting the whole herd. So here's what those areas look like in an actual facility layout. You have your adult cow barn or barns, where in this case, this is a tunnel barn with fans over the stalls. It's a very well-defined environment, uh, separate from the holding area, which is its own environment over here that has natural ventilation and a lot of cooling technologies. And that is separate from the parlor by using positive pressure in the parlor. So we have three very distinct zones with three very ventilation and cooling requirements and three very uh, separated. Uh, so they have very different microclimates. When you put that in an automatic milking systems, those areas don't exist anymore. Your parlor is essentially your robot. And I've seen a couple of robots that use chimneys to bring in air and create a positive pressure, but those are the exception to the rule in my experience. Um, the holding area and the living space are now in this gray area. You don't know where one ends and one begins. If you have guided flow, there might be a literal holding pen that where you put your cows. Um, but even then, that's still in the same environment as the living space. Now we have the equivalent of a smoking area in a restaurant. And as you all know, diffusion doesn't work that way. These are all the same environment now. We lost the separation and we also lost the ability to cool as aggressively as we used to in the holding area. We can't just start blasting air and water here because some might get into the stalls. You might have too much water in your manure. Now there's a lot of facility implications to doing what we used to do in the holding area. But it also changes the inherent social structure of the cows. Now there's like uh, really nice neighborhoods and not so nice neighborhoods. If I'm a cow standing right here, all it takes is what, around 20 feet and I can go get milk in the robot. The robot gives me candy when I get milk. Uh, it's how they help the cows keep going back to the robot. So it's, it's a very short distance to get um, essentially a very nice uh, milking and some candy. I walk 20 feet that way, I can get some water or go to the brush. I walk 20 feet this way, I can go to the feed pump and eat and I walk 20 feet this way and I can go to a stall and lay down. If I'm a cow living here, I can meet most of my needs uh, by just walking 20 feet one way or the other. This is from a parlor, sorry, this is from a pen that is around 300 feet long. And the only other water access besides this one is on the end of the pen. 
So once you get enough uh, aggressive cows here, a timid cow may not even try to approach this water. Now she has to walk 300 feet to get water, rest, and then come back to get milk. So she has to walk another 300 feet. So some cows are walking a, lo a lot shorter distances than other cows and are living in very different zones. So as you can see, the, the barn is, the robot is right here. And this is actually a dead zone in this barn. There's very little airflow. So some people might think to add a fan. The problem with that is, again, I can no longer just start cooling um, as I used to in the holding area. I may be making this zone even higher priority and I can be impacting the cow flow. As I'm making this zone better for the cows, which is good for their well-being, I may be um, inherently changing their social interactions with this space and creating uh, traffic in the cow flow. I don't really know. We don't really have a way to answer that question right now. There hasn't been any research on this. Most recommendations I've seen for AMS on ventilation have been what we used to see 20 years ago in, in regular barns. Really good ventilation, optimal ventilation, excellent ventilation. These very qualitative terms that don't really have uh, concrete recommendations because we don't really have a way to give concrete recommendations. But technology is getting there. Um, we're starting to see more um, location technology like uh, automatic sprinklers. So as a cow walks in, she'll get showered and as she walks out, the sprinkler will turn off. So we're not wasting as much water. We're not introducing as much water. We're gonna have uh, soon, it's becoming more commonplace to have GPS on individual cows. So now we can actually answer that question. Here's what my cow flow looks like before I installed fans, thanks to my GPS data. And now after installing fans, here's what my cow flow looks like. And I can now make a decision whether improving that area affected my cow flow. And if it didn't, great, then I can just cool my cows. But if it did, now I have a decision. Do I improve cooling or do I keep the better cow flow? And now it becomes this very multidisciplinary problem that we need the veterinary and the producer ventilation um, models. And it, it's a very challenging question to answer and it hasn't been answered. And I don't think it's gonna get answered anytime soon, but I think this is where the industry is heading. But we start doing this, uh, these more custom solutions based on the individual needs for the barn. Well, let's try to do it anyways. Uh, here we have a, I'm gonna go through three uh, automatic milking system layouts. And I'm going to show you different ways to ventilate them and what the implications are uh, when you ventilate them with one solution versus the other. You can find all of this in this link from uh, Progressive Dairyman. Um, they have more models and more information that I have here. They go through the management style so you can get a better idea of how those work in terms of like managing a, uh, an AMS facility. But in terms of ventilation, we have a long L. It's called a long L because this shape makes an L and long because there's two on one side of the L and one and one on the other side. An inline design, which would be the same as the long L, except now I'm gonna move this robot over here. So they're in line, literally. And then I'm gonna take a look at Homestead uh, Dairy, which has an inline design in a huge scale. I think they have 48 robot units in that facility. So we can see how well the models from a smaller facility scale up to what is a, a one of the largest facilities of AMS units. Here's what the top the top view looks like of the long L. Um, the cows can come in through here. We have a little bit of a, of a holding, a fetch pen if, if some cows need to be um, helped in their milking. We have the equivalent of the holding area, which is the entrance and exit area of the robot is very big. So the cows don't feel trapped and it, it keeps the cow flow uh, going. And uh, then there's some sorting where we can access our uh, special, special needs area for cows that need to be uh, taken care of in one way or the other. So I replicate this uh, in, in CAD so I can put it in a model. I added, I added a sidewall fans, so we can look at what this model will look like in cross ventilation, as well as uh, end wall fans, so we could look at what this would look like in a tunnel ventilation. Uh, I also installed uh, two 
72 inch louvered fans so we can see how this fan is impacting those styles and how the styles will look like if they didn't have a fan. And if you're not familiar with what kind of fan this is, uh, there's this really big uh, four feet basically uh, fans that have these louvers to help redirect the airflow to different areas in the burn. So here's how that, uh, that layout would look like in cross ventilation. We have these really big dead zones created by the robot room that is blocking the air uh, directly in the, in the direction of the flow. As it's blocking it, it's also redirecting the air around it, speeding it up. So the stalls next to the robot actually have higher air speeds. And that's really good for this special, special needs pen. They're getting uh, around one to two meters per second, which is above the one meter per second recommendation. But even these stalls at the end here are getting this light blue, which is uh, above the one meter per second recommendation. So overall, uh, the solution looks good. The, the biggest issue is these two dead zones in the, in the robot ent entrance and exit area, but we could solve that with a fan and, uh, or not if the cow flow uh, would be significantly affected. Here's another view where you can see the uh, most of the areas have uh, two meter per second or so uh, in, the, in the flow, except around the robots, we have those really big dead zones because the air can travel across the robot. For tunnel, we see what we typically see in tunnel designs. Air is flowing through the feed lane instead of through the cows. And something that happens is the crossover walls. These are typically built to uh, protect the cows, to keep water from getting into the stalls, etc. But they're also really good baffles that push the air away from the cows. And you can see they're creating these dead zones, particularly this huge dead zone here, where all of these stalls are not getting uh, cooling air speeds. The stalls with the fans are getting cooling air speeds, but overall, uh, for this long L uh, design, the tunnel ventilation doesn't seem like a very good approach. Uh, because as you can see, with the red color for the higher air speeds, most of the air is flowing away from the cows into the large, um, uh, the large open area. Uh, that is the feed lane and the feed alley. Where we actually want the air, uh, we have dead zones and we have the three robots blocking the airflow. Then the fan does well, it increases the airflow, but then as soon as it hits that crossover wall, it gets redirected away from the cows. So you would need another fan um, every time you hit those walls to prevent that from happening. Oh, so what is actually happening? If we look at it in a different way, the blue area is the area my air has to flow, it's my flow area. The red area is uh, essentially the amount of blue being blocked by the red. So my robot rooms are here, they're blocking the airflow, they're blocking around 25% of my flow area. However, all of that area that they're blocking is resting space is where I want my air the most. So even though it's, not, it's only 25% of the area, it's actually almost 100% of the resting space that's being blocked in the tunnel version. If we compare that to the cross ventilation, this time the robot is only blocking 20% of the area and none of the block space is a resting space. So it's, it's, it's clearly a better solution in this case um, for a variety of reasons, but the most important one is the robot is blocking uh, less area and less important area than the tunnel version was. We can look at we can look at the uh, we can look at the inlight layout, which is very similar except the airflow is now um, basically completely parallel to the, to the robots. We, we no longer have these robot rooms over here blocking the air. So same thing, I created the geometry. Um, I added those fans to test that solution. Um, these robot rooms are gone. Uh, and I also added a couple more inlets on the side. Um, now that the robots aren't blocking, we can use this as a, as a, glue, uh, a good 
inlet area for the for the solution. The cross ventilation results look exactly the same. This is a little bit longer. It's around 10 to 20 feet longer because of the extra robot here. But it's it's basically the same airflow pattern. A dead zone here, a dead zone here, and every everywhere else it looks okay. And you can see that again. The airflow here, it's very good. It's close to two meters per second on most of the barn. But then you get to that robot and we're blocking the airflow completely. So it's just uh, a big dead zone, both in the entrance and the exit of the robot. The tunnel, however, now looks a lot better. The same effect that happened in the cross where the air is being redirected because of the tunnel is happening here. But now it's to our benefit because it's cooling that that area where the cows are entering and leaving the robot. So now I have cooling air spits there and the only dead zones that I really have are created by the crossover guards as we see in most tunnel designs. But we can fix that with fans. The overall velocity is much better distributed. We no longer have the really sharp red colors here. Now it's closer to what we're seeing in the tunnel, sorry, in the cross of two meters per second. There's still cooling air speeds in my resting space, uh, except in this area, but I could fix that area by adding another fan here. So now it's looking like a much better solution. I still have to add fans because this, this baffle that pushes the air around, but overall it's a much better distributed flow. And there may be some way <clears throat> to mitigate these baffle effects uh, from the crossovers, uh, which we could address with the computer modeling. Uh, for example, we could move or we could design it so the water is away from that wall and lower the wall uh, height so that we can get a, a better distribution. Uh, we can start testing all of these solutions and make a custom design for this AMS barn. And that's, and that's sort of what, what my work load ice in, in Artex will have an idea or a design and then we'll start to iterate on the on the design until we can find solutions either through modifications in the design or modifications uh, in the number of fans or, or in the fan uh, locations. This time I'm only blocking 8% of the area. It's still resting area, but it's significantly less and because it's significantly less, there's a better distribution of the pressures in the barn and the, the overall issue is mitigated. It's not as significantly as it was with the cross. The cross is basically the same. Uh, we have uh, a little bit more area being blocked, but nothing really changed in the conditions. But something that I do want to point out is the cross for this design requires 26 fans and the tunnel only requires 18 fans. So I could add uh, six more fans into the tunnel and have a similar number of fans and get basically uh, the same airflow distribution. And now it becomes an issue of, well, how much does one cost versus the other? What's my overall pressure in the barn? Uh, what's, what's the typical day-to-day -day operation? And how is the management going to change? But we can get there because we answer the question that both of these solutions will provide adequate airflow. Whereas before, the tunnel wasn't providing very good airflow and the cross was, so there, there wasn't even a question. Cross was a better solution in that case. So it really depends on the, on the airflow patterns that are created. And then we can start asking and adding other elements of design to the, to the, to the ventilation design. But uh, let's look at a very large case, which is um, the Homestead Dairy. It's a cross ventilated barn. You can find more information in that link. Um, and here's what it looks like. You have um, your fans over here. There's air flowing this way. <clears throat> and this area is very similar to what we've been modeling with the, um, with the uh, inline and L layout where we have this large open area where the cows uh, enter and exit the robot, there's water access, there's food, food access, and then they can go back to the, to the resting area at their leisure. There's a very small fetch pen over here. And so it, it's, it looks very similar to the, to the sign that we've done, except it's pretty big. These are the robot rooms. Each of them has three robots on each side. 
and this barn is actually mirrored. So it would be double of this. So there's four robot rooms on each side for a total of eight. Each robot room has six. Six times eight is 48. So there's 48 robot units in this facility. Um, I actually had the chance to visit this place and take uh, using my airspeed sampling methodology. I took airspeed measurements uh, to see how the airflow uh, was distributed. And you can see by the blue dots, blue dots mean that it meets the one meter per second recommendation. Red dot means it doesn't. So basically blue means there's good airflow, red means there's dead air. And we're seeing basically the same layout as the model. Fast airspeed away in this open area, the lowest airspeed but meeting cooling capacity, the furthest you are from the robot. <clears throat> as we get closer to the robot, these are faster. This is around 400 feet per minute, whereas this was around 200 feet per minute. And then a big dead zone right behind the robot uh, because the robot is blocking the airflow uh, from the barn. Something that was uh, installed when I was there that I thought was very interesting were these three circulation fans. These three 72-inch uh, louvered fans that are trying to cool or, or prevent that dead zone. The idea is that uh, you're gonna put these big fans, get the air, and ideally flow across into the other fan. Uh, unfortunately, from both my results and the model, that is not what's happening. So I took this geometry, I built the, the equivalent of Homestead uh, in, in CFD. I put sides, uh, fans on the, on the sidewall to do a cross ventilated, sides on the end wall to do a tunnel version. And we can see the results. Uh, it's extremely similar to the previous uh, model of the inline, except times four. Uh, the dead zones keep going behind the robots. The areas close to the robot have fast moving air. The areas far away from the robot have slower air, but still rich in cooling. And the open area at the end has fast moving air as well. And you can see how those fans are helping their immediate location, but not the pen across. And the problem is uh, the way the management is designed in this barn, which is very well designed, all the people traffic is here. So you never have to go and bother the cows in the, in the pens, which means they have really quick access to these pens and they happen to be maternity pens and special to need pens. Unfortunately, that also means those are the pens that have the most issues with ventilation. They have the biggest dead zones. So what was a really good design decision for management ended up affecting the ventilation. And, and that's the unfortunate reality of, of these AMS units that we have to make these, these compromises in ventilation design. We, I know ideally I wouldn't want the robots there, but they make the most sense for, for the workers. So these fans are helping but they're not getting very far. They're only getting to their immediate pen and they're not getting across. So I would need to install another three fans. And the reason is right here, we have the feed pump. If we look at it from the side, it looks like this. So you can see by the sharp change in color, that is acting like a baffle, pushing air up and away from the cows. So these fans are hitting the floor getting fast moving air, it hits that feed pump and then it's back up and being pulled away from the cows, essentially being wasted after. So they asked the question, what if we install fans in these dead zones? Will that fix the issue? And it did in the immediate location, but then once it hit, hits that baffle, uh, the air gets pushed away and this area has dead air. So it's an okay solution, but it's not the best solution. But because we can model that, we can now ask all sorts of questions. Like what if we install what I call in quotes, optimally in those dead zones? I say in quotes because um, typically you would never install a fan the wrong direction. The flow is coming this way. So you want the fan to match the direction of the flow. 
this goes against this. This has a fan perpendicular to the flow. Uh, but because we have that dead zone created by the robots, I think it's going to be okay. There's basically no airflow there. So the fan should be able to work properly. And we can see from the model that it does a pretty good job. The air goes in, goes all the way through that pen, and it gets deflected again by that baffle in the crossover, but it already did its job. It cooled the pen. And if we look at this in the overall contours, we can see that it's slightly affected by the airflow direction. Those jets aren't straight. They're kind of moving around. But overall, most of these stalls now have cooling air speeds. So I was able to do the job with two fans, whereas before three fans weren't able to do, all because I changed the directions of the fans. And of course, we have to test this inside and make sure that's actually true. This is just a model, but it's giving us some ideas that we may not have thought of or may not have even tested before. So it's, it's a really good tool for addressing these customized uh, design decisions that we have to do in this tunnel bond, sorry, in this AMS bond. Now, what if we design Homestead as a tunnel barn? And it, it looks pretty bad. Um, basically, every time it hits one of those uh, barriers in the crossovers, we get a huge dead zone in the resting space. All the air is flowing through the feed lanes. We get pretty good cooling in what used to be the dead zones uh, for the cross ventilated version. But my key areas which were those specialty those special needs pens because of the crossover walls are still having that air so i didn't fix my biggest issue i added more issues in the rest of the barn and i guess i cooled my my waiting area a little better but overall it, it didn't do much i need to add fans to fix this but i already saw that i can fix the issues in the crossover to adding fans so it, it doesn't make sense to do a tunnel in this in this scale Whereas in the smaller scale, it was actually okay. And that was because of the difference in size, the, the air is not as, as traveling as much. And remember that this barn is actually double this size. So we would be have to pull air 800 feet across the whole barn, which will create air quality issues in the winter. Um, could this be addressed with intake fans? We're starting to see the signs that put fans on the sidewalls to help mids fresh air, maybe, but cross ventilation just seems like a much better solution in this scenario. How does the air quality compare in the winter for cross versus tunnel? We can start asking all these questions between the cost of one system versus the other, but thanks to the model, um, there's very little benefit from going, from, going uh, from a cross design to a tunnel design. So we can arrive at a cross answer and then we can do more specifics to address the issues with this solution. Um, and I think that's what we're gonna start seeing uh, in the future. Um, I think CFD is gonna become a more commonplace tool, particularly in these large facilities. Um, we can still do the typical uh, recommendations for ventilation, but as it gets more complicated, I think uh, we're gonna start seeing more of these models. And I come back to that dead zone that we have. This dead zone is also a high priority zone. And we have to keep coming back to that juxtaposition of the social behavior of the cows and the impact I might have of that versus the cooling and, and ventilation that I want to fit. And maybe I don't want to fit it. Maybe the research shows that having that area, having slightly hotter air is good so the cows move away and want to go to the cooler air into the resting space. I'm not sure, um, I haven't seen anything published on that, but I think that's kind of the question that we need to answer. Once we answer that question with GPS data, with CFD model, with measurements, then we can start having more concrete recommendations for ventilation and AMS. Uh, right now, it's a little too blurry, both on the facility design and on the ventilation, uh, but I think we're getting to the point where we can start answering those questions. So some key points, um, we should still follow the previously established guidelines for adult cow ventilation, 40 to 60 area changes in the summer, a minimum of four area changes in the winter, and a minimum cooling speed of one meter per second or 200 feet per minute over the resting space in the summer. In general, 
ventilating parallel to the robot will create the least amount of wind shadow, but we have to remember to look into how much area is being blocked and what type of area is being blocked. So check the area that the robot is obstructing. We may be obstructing a higher vent uh, airflow using one solution versus the other, but that area may not be as important. You know, I could be blocking a special needs pen or I could be blocking a, just a transfer lane. So one is clearly better than the other. And don't assume a fan will fit any dead zones in mechanically ventilated farms. Uh, the effect is very localized and how that fan is installed will have a significant effect on the distribution of, of the airflow. So I think it's important to, um, if you're getting to that point of specificity in your design, I think that's where we need to start introducing either testing on site or some computational modeling to answer those design questions. Um, but with that, uh, I'd like to thank everyone for your attention. I'll be happy to answer any questions. I kept it a little short because I have a lecture at 12, so I need to leave probably in 10 to 12 minutes at most. We have a couple of questions. So the first one is, how much in a cross bend and inline setting does it help if instead of one long room of six robots, it is cut into three rooms with two robots and an alley of four feet in between? That's a good question. I don't know. I'd have to model it. Um, in the tunnel case, it didn't make much of a difference. Um, we had this small gap here. And that gap introduced some airflow, but not that much. So um, I'd have to run a model and see, but it, it, there might be a way where um, if you separate that and, and something these models aren't considering is the fact that there are small openings here for the, for the cows and the robots and the arm. So I think, um, I think we might see better airflow as you're mentioning. So I, I, I'm actually curious, now, like I wanna run a model of that now. Because um, I, I think it will have a, a pretty big difference. All right, the second question is, what about a small opening roof in the middle of a Chinese hat with automatic closing to have natural ventilation? In what kind of system? Um, in general, naturally ventilated barns um, in the smaller scale do pretty well with AMS units. They have a lot of flexibility. Um, so are we talking natural or are we talking a mechanical systems with an opening? I think um, it's natural. Okay. Um, I, I, that's a whole nother discussion. In natural, um, you typically have an open ridge. I've seen the chimney openings, um, but typically the, the chimney openings don't perform as well unless you really look at the design parameters. Um, similar to that though, something that I've seen on some bars is, you can see it here, there's a chimney um, and I've seen some positively pressured robot rooms. So there, there have been some attempts at bringing fresh air in those areas through the robot uh, because there's no machinery moving through them. It gives you the option to put a chimney there, but I've only seen that a couple of times and that's kind of still of a new, um, a new idea. And I'm sorry if I, if I didn't answer your question on, on the natural. Um, it's just very different design philosophy than this one. So what about introducing ceiling? In general, ceiling fans or the typically called the high volume, low speed fans are really good for recirculating air. Um, they're not that great for uh, cooling uh, with a big asterisk depending on the design, but they, that could help um, in these big zones particularly in Homestead, you know, you put an HBLS fan here and it may not provide the optimal cooling speed, but it might just mix the air enough because if we could see this from the side, um, the robots don't reach the ceiling. So a lot of the fresh, a lot of the airflow is going up and around the robot. So if you then had a ceiling fan creating this sort of pattern, then you might start to see um, a better circulation of the flow. So that, that could be a solution. Um, and we could model that to see how well it would look like. Uh, but that, that, that might be a good idea, actually. All right, we have uh, three more questions. 
Um, okay. With regards to mechanically ventilated barns, roughly what percentage of cross vent barns have you seen and what percent of tunnel Why do you think there would be a difference? That's a hard question. Typically larger facilities will do cross, but I've seen some pretty small cross. I couldn't tell you a percentage right now. Um, but my guess would be there's more tunnels just because of retrofits. Um, oh, you deleted. <laughs> you de oh. Can I can I switch to answer and see what yes, the rest? You can. Okay. Uh, that percentage of tunnel, why do you think there'd be a difference between those two? Like I said, I think the biggest one is natural barns that got retrofitted into tunnels. Uh, preference is one. Some people hate how a cross ventilated barn looks. It's just, it just looks like a big Walmart uh, sometimes. So, and there's been some new designs that uh, change that and it looks more open and it looks great, but um, some people have very heavy opinions just on how it looks. Uh, other people's have opinions on how it performs. I think both systems can work very well de depending on the situation. So um, I don't think there's one that's significantly better than the other. I think it's a case to case basis. All right. So when did you take the measurements of home? Hmm. Two or three years ago. Um, I'm sure they've gone, I think they were going through some building at the time. So I'm sure there's been changes since then, uh, but it was about probably two or three years ago. I can't remember the exact date. I can go look it up, but yeah. Is the air input in these examples natural or do they have fans bringing the air in? It's all a, I'm gonna get a little technical, a pressure inlet boundary condition. Basically it's assuming the pressure at the inlet is zero, is the atmosphere. And then the fans over here are pulling the air and creating that intake. So um, I don't know if that answers your question. So I guess it would be natural, but it's a very specific case of natural where it's matching the atmosphere. So there's no like wind effects at the moment. All right, and our last question, how does water sprinkling affect their flow? As far as I know, not significantly other than cooling the air. Um, I haven't seen any research on that, but I don't think the water, I think the waters follow the streamline of the air. I don't think they do any significant blocking of the airflow. So it's, um, for the most part, uh, you can assume that the sprinkling won't change the water. Right. Can we use fans with a small incline inside the rubber area? What the maximum speed in the question? Uh, I'm not sure I understand. Do you mean, can we use fans angled towards the robot area? Like, um, like if these fans were aiming this way? Yeah, we could do that. Um, that's, that's a perfectly valid solution for airflow. I don't know if that's a perfectly valid solution for um, cow flow. Um, I don't know if in making the area where you want cows to be ideally moving away, making it the coolest area in the pen might not be the greatest idea, but we don't have that answer yet, so. All right, perfect. That's the last of our questions. Thank you very much for speaking for us and uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Our next webinar will be in two weeks with Professor Mike Brooks, and that will be on the benefits of dry cow cooling. So stay tuned for that. And with that, Thank you all. Thank you very much.